now we get to talk about the consumer in terms of holiday shopping and then uh, you know following that full circle and really looking into what is happening with evictions and where are we most at risk so before we get into it again please like share subscribe and uh, if you have any comments questions please drop them into the uh, in, into you know just below in the comment section we love the back and forth and getting some great feedback so I never really understood Black Friday. Uh, it never seemed to, to, to appeal to me. And apparently it doesn't appeal to most people. So <laughs> this is something that I thought was interesting where Black Friday and Cyber Monday uh, intent and how many people are going to be going on Black Friday. 78% uh, said no, which is up from 73%. And how many people said yes and 27% versus 22%. So clearly people aren't going to go to Black Friday the same way they have in the past. That's not surprising. And it's just when you look at what companies have done, uh, a lot of these Black Friday sales are now have now been extended to either be from Monday of Thanksgiving to the end of the week, or for just the the month of not starting on the Thursday and then carrying through the remainder of the year, just because the retail sales and you know, guys are trying to get as many people through the door, trying to push as much product out there. So this is not surprising because why rush to go on Friday if I can go on Saturday or if I can go the, mon the Monday prior, the Monday after, and that's where we're starting to see some of these adjustments. Now, when we think about, okay, well, what about the temporary closures on consumer-facing businesses, you know, kind of tying in the different pieces, we're also seeing this continue to slow down in terms of just the amount of temporary closures as well. And, and that's something that's only accelerating. It's causing a, a bigger loss in terms of just hours worked, which is just gonna put more pressure on what people can do and what money they have to spend, which is why, excuse me, it's not surprising to see a big reduction in just general holiday spending. And now when we look into you know, Black Friday and Cyber Monday, so now that when we, when we flip into Cyber Monday, you know, how many people are gonna be chiming into Cyber Monday? 85% said no, 15% said yes, and it's just because, again, those 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 different av availability than the options for these benefits has just been year uh, has been for the last month or the last week, and would you miss the experience of shopping and uh, in stores on the day after Thanksgiving? <laughs> Eighty eight percent said no, <laughs> not surprising. I don't like crowds either, but now with COVID, the fears of crowds, the fears of just being in crowded places, that doesn't surprise me at all. So those are, these are little things that I think are just weighing, and as we've been talking about the pressure in terms of just holiday shopping and the same spending as, as previously, we're just not seeing it with the retail sales also already showing that there, we're seeing a, a pretty healthy decline in terms of overall expectations, uh, especially with personal income going from, you know, the expectations of negative 0.1%, actually down negative 7%, and it was about 0.7%, which again, is just people have less income, which is going to reside in just less spending and a bit more uh, focus on core discretionary instead of, uh, you know, less discretionary. And, uh, you know, American Express, you have to look at it as like, okay, well, if how are companies spending and, and how are companies moving things? And this is American Express worldwide build business corporate versus small and medium uh, size and corporate credit card spending is down 53% year over year as large businesses spend less on travel and entertainment. Anybody who works at a big corporation or trying to build a corporation, you can attest to the fact that you're probably doing a lot less and trying to save capital and trying to just save money as well as avoiding airplanes, avoiding crowds, adjusting travel schedules. And you know, we're seeing a little bit of an increase in U.S. small and medium. Uh, you know, uh, and it, it's just going to be a matter of international is fairly flat. U.S. is starting to see a little bit of a recovery, but again, it's it's still in the early stages as the large corporate corporate America is just uh, just not moving around, and that's going to be a big hindrance as we look at airlines and other types of major hotel ho hotel chains as we go into next year. Now, shifting gears a bit. Because this is something that I, I, we've been talking about with housing data, which again came out fairly strong with new home sales, uh, where survey was 975,000, came in at 999,000. Uh, new home sales month over month was expected at 1.7, uh, up 1.7 percent, came in at negative 3 percent, uh, 0.3 percent. So again, like the home data continues to be fairly robust in terms of new home sales. New home sales month over month. Obviously, there is uh, uh, you know a seasonal impact on the month over month. But 
what's going to happen with supply? Everyone keeps talking about how supply is short, which it is, not saying it isn't, because we have an eviction moratorium. Eviction or foreclosures in the next two months is either very likely or somewhat likely in this chart. And we've had the moratorium that has delayed a significant amount, but what's going to happen going forward? And when we look at this, when this expires, you can see the amount of people that will be impacted and will face foreclosure heading into 2021 once those once the process kicks off. And this is a big issue overall. And uh, just uh, something that came across is the Fed sets December 14th Main Street loan cutoff after extension denied. So they will have to submit loans for the Main Street Lending Program uh, following the decision last week by, uh, by to allow the facility to expire. It is unlikely that any loan submitted to the portal after the 14th will be processed in time for purchase by the Main Street Program, special purpose vehicle. So these are things that are going to start to rush out. And again, this all comes down to the pressure that we're seeing in, in the different areas as we're looking at uh, you know where evictions are going to increase. And these evictions and these foreclosures is going to put more supply into the market, is going to put more pressure in terms of where things are, and it's going it to cause an issue with, okay, well, you know housing prices have gone up, housing prices have gotten better. Well, it's with this not in the market. It's, not, it's without this volume, which I think is going to be a bigger problem overall. But you know, showing <clears throat> the overall homeowner you know, the, the homes that have been purchased so far, the median mortgage is, is down payment and uh, on condos purchase is highest since uh, 2000. So people have been sitting on a significant amount of capital. They've been sitting on and raising cash. And these are people that have the means to move out and move from the urban to suburban. And this is why we're seeing the, there's a, a significant amount of cash being put down to bring these homes in, which again is also showing that the the level of people that are willing to come in and buy a home have been on the upper end side of the equation what happens going forward you know a lot of the a lot of this these people have now left the market they've bought their second home they've which they've lived in in and temporarily or and then will rent out a lot of this this low hanging fruit is now gone what does this look like going forward and that's when we start to think it gets uh, there becomes a problem as and and when we look at the mortgage origination by credit score if you have more money to put down you typically have saved more. You're better with credit. So when we look at the actual origination by credit score, it's 760 plus. So people of the highest quality have been buying those homes. Now, when we look at you know further down, clearly there's been a, it's been weighted towards the wealthier individuals in these different areas, and you can only buy that home once. You're not going to get a huge amount of turnover. And that's why when we look at home prices as the next wave with individuals who are going to be foreclosed on, might face eviction, need to find something new, going down that credit score is going to be a problem because you're, we've seen banks be very concerned in terms of how are they lending. And when we look at it by age, you know, there, is, there was pent up demand between the 30 and 49 year olds. So there has been a huge gap that's been filled on people that have been living in apartments or condos again, urban to suburban is within that 30 to 50 range. But so, but again, it can only really happen once, you know, you really see this surge and you can see where the surge started and how it really continued. And a lot of, and don't get me wrong, this will continue. Like this is only going up into Q2. Like there's going to be a Q3 that will be strong as well based on the uh, weekly data. It's just, it's going to, to run its course. Like if you look at Q, Q1 of 2003, you can see the, the, the significant move and then the drop off. And that's something that we think we're going to see again as we go forward, especially as a lot of the um, more, the people that have the ability to move have moved. Now, when we look at delinquency rates, you know, the severely delinquent, the, the 30 days late, you're starting to see a little bit of a slowdown, which is a positive, again, coming full circle back to the evictions, back to the foreclosures. We've seen some of that uh, normalized. The question is going to be now, as the expirations happen, as people lose their jobs and can't get their jobs back, as they lose unemployment, as they lose these different benefits, we expect to see this start to increase. And as the, the, uh, the levels start to rise, we can assume the severely uh, derogatory numbers, those are the individuals that are going to be facing eviction and foreclosure proceedings that will start immediately once they expire, come, uh, unless they get extended and uh, protected through, through some point into uh, 2021. 
and more than 14 million people have little or no confidence they'll be able to pay next month's rent. So when we look again about where things sit going forward, clearly there remains pressure. The pressure is only mounting. And that's why the high confidence level is going to be a, an issue in terms of confidence to pay next month's rent. High confidence, 25 million. But when we start to look at no confidence, slight confidence, moderate confidence, confidence, we're, we're hitting to 14 million people that are going to be struggling into a very tough market. And just looking, you know, kind of, you know, picking that up on the other side, mortgage loans and forbearance continue to decline. At, but as these decline, the question is, are we going to all of a sudden get this pivot higher as people try to make do? You know, they've cut spending in specific areas. They're now focusing more on housing. They've been able to maybe renegotiate or to um, to uh, refinance their loan. So now their loan payments are, are better and they have an ability to now get into a better loan and a better situation. But again, we're starting to see, uh, you know, the the increases here are, are are specific in terms of, okay, well, where was it pre-CARES Act and what's going to happen once a lot of this expires? And once it expires, we expect this to start to shift higher. And again, the consumer on a housing level, on a personal level, on is going to be a problem. And we've seen a lot of these first mover actions that have been supportive of of home activity, which is starting to dwindle and go away, which is why when we look into 2021, unless we get a real shift and an extension of forbearance and eviction uh, delays, it's going to put, uh, put pressure on 2021 growth figures, GDP numbers, and a lot of essentially just general activity, you know, throughout 2021, which is why we think that we're why why we're concerned about where that that economic growth is going to be generated as we head into the new year.